reading from the King James Bible, the real Bible, of course. Um, please follow me along in the scriptures that uh, we will briefly be looking at. <laughs> I want to warn you. I may get a little emotional in this video. Yeah, I'm sarcastic. I get a little angry. I get a little gruff, but um, <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 40 in the King James Bible, the real Bible, go there, of course. As I confided in uh, my brother from Australia, who sent me some, gave me some pretty Pretty good information. Oh, ah, beg your pardon, brethren. Uh, for all times, uh, there we go. Sorry, the thing with my computer. But um, mm. uh, my brother from Australia gave me a few links, which I'm going to try to put in the description uh, box of this video. But um, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 on to verse 5. I've been drawn onto the prophets, uh, especially of late, because the parallels in the prophets and what's going on are so striking. Uh, if you don't read the Old Testament at all, Christian, you're, you're crippling yourself. But uh, let's read. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 and verse 5. Comfort ye. Comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough path places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Doctrinally, dispensationally, this is for the Jews, yes, but again, brethren, again. <clears throat> First Timothy, chapter 6. Verses 11 on to verse 16. It has been quite a day. First Timothy chapter 6 verses 11 on to verse 16. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called. And has professed a good profession before many witnesses. <laughs> I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall shew, 
who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. <clears throat> Titus chapter 2 verse 11 on to verse 15 Titus chapter 2, verse 11, on to verse 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. Let's read that again teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Ah, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Again, for me to speak the same thing unto you is not grievous, but necessary. I did just paraphrase that, beg your pardon. This is impromptu. Titus chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 11. But avoid foolish questions. And genealogies and contentions. And strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject knowing that he that is such as subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself Fight the good fight of faith, brethren, especially in these times, as we're awaiting, <laughs> looking for that blessed hope. Here in America, the... Um, uh, what is it? The stay at home order now has been prolonged to April 30th. Surprise, surprise. <clears throat> All over the world, prisoners are being released in, uh, in numbers, apparently. Even close to home. I literally live about two blocks away from a county lockup. 
and uh, some of the links and information that a brother from Australia has given me today. Uh, wow, wow, man, wow. You know, I, I, I'm not an elder. I'm not. I'm not. But I've been out there. I've been out there. On the battlefield. And, um... I, I do have a love for the Jewish people. And you know what, brethren? It doesn't get easier when you encounter firsthand what it says in Romans chapter 11. Follow me along, of course, please. I'm expecting you to. Where it says in Romans 11, verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And verse 28, in Romans 11, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Hence, the time of Jacob's trouble. It never gets easier Brethren, it never gets easier when the Lord gives you the opportunity to witness onto a Jew. And um, you encounter that latent rejection of Christ and of the gospel. And the word of truth, the King James Bible, the real Bible, it never gets easier. And I, I would be very cautious of someone who comes to you and says things like, Oh, it gets easier the more I witness. It never gets easier. And you know what, brethren, it's not going to get easier. But brethren, during these times, okay, with the Mark of the Beast technology right there, right there, just waiting to be implemented, I'm going to put the links in this video. I'm going to find them. I, I got them on my cell phone, but I'm going to find them and try to put them in here on the, in the description box. This ID 2020 stuff. Wow. Wow. And Francis and the United Nations calling for everyone to stop their wars and come together against the common enemy, which happens to be a Jesuit biological weapon that they have created. First Timothy chapter six again. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Hmm. 
And again, Titus chapter 2, verses 11 on to 15 again. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. even though nobody wants to hear. Even though the closer we get to the catching away, <laughs> you're casting your pearls before swine, it seems. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly, worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope. The glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Like I said, I, I'm not an elder. I'm not. But again, I've been out there. And I have a little experience. And someone, a young Jewish man, who um, the Lord gave me an opportunity to witness unto him. This Jewish young man came to me first. I didn't go to him. He came to me. And with a lot of my experience with the Jewish people, when they learn that, when they have learned that I'm a Christian, usually about eight out of ten times, about eight out of ten times, they ask me. Usually. And when the Lord gives you the opportunity and he opens floodgates for you, and then when you um, encounter Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 60, you stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. It never gets easier. And you know what, brethren? You can uh, you can go ahead and harden yourself to the point where it just doesn't bother you. But you know what? I'm not like that. It bothers me. It bothers me. It does. So, um, today I, I shared some of this information that a brother from Australia gave me um, with this Jewish young man. And uh, as so many times before, <laughs> As so many times before, stopping of the ears, and gnashing on me of the teeth. And I knew it. I knew it right away. I knew it because I... I been through this before, but it just never gets easier. It never gets easier. And
and in accordance with the scripture. And this, this is, this is the authority. This is the standard. This is what we go by. The King James Bible, the real Bible. And in accordance with the scripture. But avoid foolish questions. And genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of, of himself. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 Ecclesiastes chapter 1 <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 18 For in much wisdom is much grief and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Now the context in this is that Solomon knew that he had messed up a lot of things. And he knew, he knew that. And it caused him grief. And the more he learned, the more sorry he became. And you read his diary, if you will, of Ecclesiastes, which was written by King Solomon, thank you, um, you'll see. But see, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Look at verse 11 in Titus chapter 3, knowing. Knowing. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Now some of you, some of you, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that you're hard-hearted, of course not, but um, else you wouldn't do anything for the Lord if your heart was hard, would you? But knowing, knowing what's going on when someone rejects Christ, the gospel, the truth of God's word, the King James Bible, the real Bible, it's the knowing that he that is such as subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. That doesn't get easier the longer you go, okay? For those of you who have been only saved for about three or five years, it doesn't get easier. Just, just to let you know, okay? And you got to guard yourself against, well then, I don't even want to bother with him. I'm not even going to try or I'm not going to even open my mouth. Even though the times we are living in right now, that close from being caught up. Remember, our labor in the Lord is not in vain. And um, also having a quick phone co conversation with a dear brother. Brethren, these people who are not saved, they are ready for the Antichrist. There is still some breaking that has to happen. 
but in a general sense, brethren, these people are ready. And one of the links I'm going to uh, hopefully provide in this um, video in the bottom there, uh, at the very end of it all, uh, a Jewish um, official or something is quoted as saying, the Messiah is the one who can save us from the coronavirus. And see, one of the trappings of the Jews is that they were expecting David, their king, to come, a warrior, when God was manifest in the flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, was walking on the earth. They were expecting a mighty king with a sword. But he came as the lamb to die on the cross to the definition of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory that, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. You know, this book, the King James Bible, the real Bible. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Christ at first came as the lamb to fulfill that. The suffering servant, Isaiah 53. Okay. But see, the Jews were looking for a warrior king. They were not looking for the lamb. But when Jesus comes back, as king, to claim what is his, <laughs> but see, Revelation chapter 6. Now, in the book of Revelation chapter 4, we see the catching away. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Who's the door? The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He is the door. Okay? Brother Brian did a wonderful video about that. Wonderful. Check that out. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said... Come up hither. And I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one, <laughs> one sat on the throne. One. Not one here, one there, and a little bird flying around. No. One. Okay? Catching away. And then we see in Revelation chapter 6, Verses 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb, who's the Lamb? Jesus Christ. 
And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. Who opens the seals? And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow and a crown, one crown. Later in the book of Revelation, when our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, comes back, he has on his head many crowns, okay? Let's continue. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. That's the Antichrist. This is the one that you post fibbers, you heretics, and unfortunately, for the Jewish people who are not truly saved and born again, this Antichrist scoundrel is going to be the one who you're looking for. And he's going to be a pope, I believe. <laughs> Remember, we live by faith, not by sight. And Antichrist is not just merely against, but a replacement. We have to remember that. Hence the time of Jacob's trouble. And Christians are not around during this. We are caught up. Brethren, it's getting pretty rough. But keep looking for the blessed hope. Stay strong in the faith. Pray for boldness. Every single one of you I pray for, I pray for your boldness. Fight the good fight of faith. As a dear brother sent me a text message, which made me weep at work. <laughs> Love you, brother. <laughs> um, until we're caught up, keep fighting the good fight of faith. And you're going to get discouraged. It, it, it just happens. But keep your eyes upon Jesus. We're looking for the blessed hope. And those who are Jewish and those who are not Jews, who um, will not accept the truth, knowing that they are subverted and sinneth, and that they are condemned of themselves. Like I said, that never gets easier, but this is what I live by, by faith and practice. So, <clears throat> thank you, brethren. Um, like I said, this was very impromptu. Um, I know I've just gone over a lot of the same scriptures. I know, I know, I know. Look out there. Look out there. What do you see? Uh, 
Okay. I love you. I'm praying for you. Wax valiant and fight, brethren. In Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen.